Okay, so it's four, so we could start. Uh, so thank you everybody for joining us today. So we are going to present you um, how talks or label wrangling, so how to manage what you barely know exists. Um, my, uh, my name is Jeremy Mechouche, so I'm a research innovation project manager at DevoTeam. Uh, I'm presenting today with uh, Carl Castagne, which is a cloud DevOps architect. So this work and this presentation is based on a project we aim, we um, we work on uh, at uh, research uh, and innovation section of DevoTeam. So we are working on the research axis on uh, autonomous cloud, uh, and the subject of label is uh, key to allow us to construct, uh, construct this uh, autonomous cloud. So that's why we work on label uh, and we present today this work. So, okay. So let's start the wrangle. So the, this presentation is decomposed in five uh, steps. So the first one will be uh, to uh, define what is a label, uh, what is not a label. So it's uh, the main key for cloud native environment is labels. Uh, then uh, Carl will present you the common use case uh, based on label. And what happens when, uh, when you forget to consider labeling. And then I will take, take back and present you the labeling best practices and the wrangle for homogeneity. So, what is a label? So, a label is basically a key value pair, uh, which, is as, which is defined, uh, which is um, tagged on resources. A resources has a name and technical characteristics, and the label will, will allow to uh, add functional context to it. So, to, for an example, we'll, get, we'll take a pod, because we talk about Kubernetes here. Um, this pod is, uh, um, is tagged, is labeled with environment dev and a project devo1, so which say that these resources uh, is belong to the project devo1 and the on a developer environment. Um, what we want also to say on the label that uh, they are not hierarchical. Um, they are flat and transversal. So you can use label on any kind of resources in cloud computing context, but any other context you can, uh, you, you can think of. Um, and that's the topics. So what is not a label? So we consider two uh, set of uh, properties for a resource. So the first one, which is not labeled, uh, are the intrinsic properties. So basically, the kind, the image, the version, the request, and limits. So still in a pod context, in a pod example. Uh, and then, which is labels we, uh, will be the extrinsic properties. So now we can see uh, project, system version, environment. We consider that as label. Um, so basically, it's, as I said, anything that can add functional context to um, the resource. But just uh, for <laughs> conclude this slide, uh, labels does not produce anything. It, it allows to identify um, what belongs to the, to the resource. So now that we said uh, what is a label, what is not a label, we will see the purpose of labeling. So why are we labeling? So basically, we are labeling to group similar resources, and we apply this context uh, on uh, label-based rules on uh, several um, uh, cases. So label allow to group resources. So like, like that, we can see that we can group uh, pods based on the project that, will, uh, that is uh, assessed on the second one on another project and on a third project. And then uh, we can use these groups to apply label-based rule uh, on for FinOps, for example. We can see that in several, um, several projects based on FinOps. Uh, several projects based on Fenox, we just use uh, labeling to uh, see what the cost of a project. Then on sustainability, which is basically the same context, the same use case. Uh, then on globally on DevOps and SysOps. And for security context. And also access control, observability, and any other. So now, uh, Carl will present you the common use cases uh, as presented uh, here. Um, in a deep dive. Hello, uh, I, wa I want to um, uh, introduce a label use case. So, uh, it's a, I will introduce another view 
of uh, label use case, common use case, and it's not um, uh, uh, exhaustive. And uh, sorry. Before. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, Label use case is used in many cases. So first, I want to introduce label use case in uh, control access management. Sorry. Yes. Um, sorry. In Kubernetes, the, um, the role, the, the sorry. The access role yeah, uh, are used um, in uh, airbag in Kubernetes, and um, for more granularity, you, are, you can use admission controller. So, um, if you want to uh, be more granular, you have to use label to specify the, um, the, the, the what, what you, you want to uh, containerize. So. You have different teams, and for each team, so you can uh, set up um, a notification access based on access control to, um, uh, to access to resources. The second, um, sorry. Um, the second use case is for backup and operation use case. You have two use main use cases. Um, in the, the first I, I will present, is um, at the infrastructure level and at, on the application level. In this case, the sysops team uh, can manage the entire of the cluster and the, and the DBI team can access to uh, a database through kubectl commands. And through an application, the, the, um, an application like Kasten, you um, can uh, Backup teams can use the, the labels for create grouping, type policy, recurrence, DRP, and uh, access control rules. With applying access control rules, they can uh, give to, um, to application team some basic uh, 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 operation like resolution, monitoring, and backup. In the next use case, uh, um, this is an abstraction of um, underlying uh, technical uh, function. Um, in the, if you go in CSP, you have many products that you can choose for uh, performance, and you can group them for uh, many CSP uh, in, in once, and uh, you can abstract the, the performance by labeling the, the, uh, the, the, the service. So, this gives a uh, catalog cloud disk usable for all of your team, and uh, it can be validated by the, uh, your FinOps governance. And it's cloud independent, uh, so you, you can use one kind of um, uh, performance in any cloud you, 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 are, you are, and it's an explicit architecture that can help you to see how your application is deployed. It's very easy. Uh, the next news case is um, for observability. Um, you have sometimes uh, application decomposed in multiple microservices, and probably microservices are shared between two applications. So in this case, it's, um, it's a good way to labelize your, um, your, your pods to, to see which application consume the, uh, this application to, um, to see the impact of an outage. So you can use in long indexation and make dedicated da dashboard for table sheeting. And you can manage also your SLA uh, at the design sta stage and see if you have a discrepancy between uh, microservices. The last one um, I want to introduce is uh, label security, um, label based on security. Uh, this is another topic because this leads to, to many uh, security uh, issues. 
um, you know that you can use it for network policy, but you, you can use it also for admin network policy at the cluster wide. And it, it can uh, lead to uh, perform some um, mistake uh, with, with this one. The Arbach Admission Control is the, it's the one I, um, I present before. And it's also used for the runtime security for group um, uh, process, process rule, file access rules, and network rules uh, in tools like NuVector, Stackwork. Uh, and uh, probably uh, Tetragon and, and so on. Um, the point is uh, pod security admission use label. And uh, if you, someone use a label, uh, can set a label on namespace, he can evaluate privilege. It's very uh, important issue. So now, what's happened when we forgot to consider labeling? Um, <laughs> If you deploy application without think about label, you can have this ugly uh, um, information system. It's not manageable at scale at all. You, you can use label for uh, massive treatment. And you have to think this before. So the message is label is governance first. And you have to think about how you have a governance about a label. This is the message. Um, now, in classes de deployment of an application, you have the day zero, day one, day two. And at day zero, you have to implement the, the governance that you set up. And you have to think also, if you don't have any use case for, um, for improve your governance and change it if, if you want. At day, at day one, you have to um, uh, build with the, what you decide. And at day two, you have to use this label. But not only, you have also to, uh, to manage every change of the label. Because it can lead to issue on operation and uh, security. Now, Jeremy will present his work on label for take homogeneity of label and solve uh, a part of the issue. <coughs> okay, so thank you. So we'll continue to the labeling best practices. So as Carl said, uh, how what what how work and reflection on what you have to um, to define on your resources. So. Um, basically, the, 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 the first uh, question you have to ask is the, the, the focus still needs to be the resources. And then we will ask five questions on um, what, we need to, yes, what we need to be, um, to be labeled on your resource. So the first one, which, which will uh, be the organizational unit. So for who this resource will be used, or who will use this, uh, these resources. So for which application? So basically, for um, which application will be will use our resource? Um, for which uh, technical resources? So with which uh, resource? How resource will interact? A lot of resources. Uh, which type of resource uh, will interact with them? And uh, which type of resources? How resource is? Uh, and then the fourth question is the financial aspect. So basically, on the business model. So will it be on premise? On cloud? Um, spot instances. So a lot of questions uh, related to business. So that's the fourth one. And then the last one, and the main one, it's an SLA, the SLA one. So on which uh, SLA have we to enforce this resource? Because uh, you have to manage these resources. Uh, so the SLA you have to, to, to respect is the um, main question also. So now that we have all these five points, uh, we're going to group uh, them and put it on a knowledge base, uh, which aggregates every information, um, how a resource how it needs to be labeled on. So this knowledge base could be uh, defined as an ontology or a taxonomy. Um, and it's a uh, knowledge representation, uh, um, but it's uh, uh, other topics. Uh, and you will have to do some data governance on, uh, on this knowledge base, but it's another topic uh, we don't cover here. <clears throat> so, now we have a knowledge base, which is basically our framework. Uh, we, will, we will use it for uh, several use cases, as Carl presents you, but 
uh, how can we enforce it? That's the first uh, the question of this slide, so which we call a label coercition uh, life cycle. So the first step is defining the knowledge base. Then we will use it with uh, admission controller policies on any types of them. Um, then we will have to apply these policies, which could be mutation, so inject new label on resource, uh, or validation to check labels defined on uh, the resource you deploy. And then uh, we will have the label-based use cases, uh, as present uh, Carl uh, earlier. So this is uh, the topics to the, the first part of our presentation on um, anticipation, which is the key if you want to uh, uh, truly manage your label. Uh, now we will see uh, the Ringo, so the topics, uh, of the title of this presentation. And it's basically when you want to labelize, but you haven't anticipated. So how, will you do, uh, how uh, are you going to do? And that's what we propose here. So uh, basically consider um, um, the developer or ops or as you want, any, anybody who can deploy resources on your cluster. Um, and they want to deploy uh, resources label on um, the environment development. And they want to say, they, they are uh, really nice, they had label to their, their resources, um, and they had um, label. So the first one will define its resources as environment develop L, I think you can read. Um, and then the other one will define also, want also to define in a development environment, but he, he will define um, <coughs> its label a key and value uh, differently than the first one. So um, basically, in this context, we will not be able to apply the same resource, uh, the same rules on these two uh, kind of resources because they don't have the same uh, labeling. So um, assume uh, ba based on that, um, we have a, a, sev a huge problem. And considering, so now it's just an example, but consider it a thousand scale uh, with a lot of ops and way to define uh, their uh, label. Uh, their context, so just considering that. <clears throat> so to remediate to that, we propose an approach in two steps. So the first one, so this is a cloud, your cloud native architecture, which is defined with bad labeling. Um, you will start by extract label from that, that's what we propose. You will get uh, basically a local referential, which is the aggregation of all your uh, resources, all the technical, the technical characteristics name of your resource and the label, label you define, which will be input in our intelligent label homogenization component, which will be based on the knowledge base. Sorry. And based on this component, uh, we will have a recommended referential, which will be the um, correction and homogenization and the action to do to applies on the cloud native architecture and get uh, homogeneous, um, cloud native, uh, homogeneous uh, labeling in our cloud native architecture. <clears throat> so we're going to deep dive in uh, the two, uh, two steps and two, uh, two steps we propose. So the first one is the label extraction. Uh, because uh, your, your context is cloud native architecture, uh, we will have to consider and to interact with a lot, a lot of services of API, of context of cloud service provider also. So we propose to use a cloud asset inventory tools, which is a uh, Resoto or fixed inventory, which is a tool which gets you a graph oriented databases of your uh, graph oriented database of your architecture, which you can um, um, interrogate uh, and get the information uh, for the local referential. So it could be a JSON or directly on the databases. Um, then the second point is the knowledge base. Uh, for the example, we keep it really simple. Uh, so we just consider a label on um, environment, project, cost center, uh, the key and value to use. But as I said, this could be really more uh, elaborate and it's basically so knowledge management uh, work. So in the next step, we have the intelligent label homogenization component we propose, uh, which is, as I said, based on the knowledge base. And it's based on natural language processing and similarity analysis, uh, which will allow to connect the label defined in your local referential with data in your knowledge base. 
uh, based on their uh, semantic, uh, on syntactic and semantic analysis and get the recommended referential, which will be used to re uh, uh, as in the first uh, slide. So just to be, uh, to um, uh, insist on this uh, example of natural language processing, uh, this allows to uh, use syntactic and semantic, it's just not just one of, uh, of them. Uh, the syntactic will allow to, um, to detect so typing error, as you can see uh, in environment. Uh, which is a uh, error we do a lot. Uh, and also in semantic, it will be more on the identify the concept we want to, to, to say, to, to present. And uh, this will be uh, that. And I want to say uh, that this uh, technique allows to compute score of similarity between the two words, and that's where the, the decision is taken. Uh, if uh, it has to use a label beyond another one. So just to elaborate the example, I have a slide, oh, sorry. I have a slide with uh, the knowledge base, which is the one I present you. Now you have uh, three resources, which are uh, labeled uh, on their own way. Uh, so you have env, envi, uh, environment. Then you, we will use our intelligent label homogenization component, which is, as I said, a combination of syntactic and semantic analysis. And it will get a, a recommended referential that you can apply on your cloud native architecture. So just to be sure to understand, uh, this free information will be grouped as environment uh, with uh, syntactic, syntactic and semantic analysis. And then will be applied on the several resources with environment. So here we just consider a key of label, but it could also be on a, on a value uh, if you want. And another example for project, it would be the same thing. And cost center is okay. And then to finish, um, so the perspective of this project will be to evaluate our system on new cloud native environment because we only consider Kubernetes. Um, and it could be applied on several use cases as any cloud service provider or anything you can label. Uh, then extend our knowledge base because it's really uh, an easy one uh, and work a lot on how to present this knowledge, how to formalize this knowledge. And then the last one is, would be to have an open source project to open source our code uh, directly to the uh, cloud asset inventory like Resoto or Fixed Inventory or any other one. So to conclude this presentation, uh, we will have we have presented you that label our main components for cloud native environment and a key to manage at scale resources. Uh, there are several use cases on label, as you can have seen on any of the talks uh, in this four day. Um, a non homogeneous labelization can induce issue in operation and governance, and anticipation is key, but remediation is possible with uh, our approach. So thank you. If you have any question, we'd be glad to answer. So thank you. Uh, thank you for your uh, insightful uh, presentation. So uh, I found it really uh, engaging and informative. My question is to know uh, what, uh, what could be your recommendation in a situation where no uh, initial label are uh, provided? So really good question. <laughs> so as I said, um, you also have a label which is defined by uh, the cloud native environment by, uh, by default. Um, and then you can um, infer a label for all your resources based on their technical uh, characteristic and also by um, um, information uh, so based as, uh, you know, um, uh, what user defined it or when, what user de de uh, deployed it or in which context or we can relate information to define to labelize them. So there is every, uh, every time there is level. So there is no context where there is no information at all, because if there is no, not inform no information at all, we can't do anything. So thank you. You can use also um, um, the interaction between resources for labeling. 
not only intrinsic resource. You mentioned coercion to enforce the new labels. Yeah. Uh, operations teams are usually very conservative. Yeah. How did they respond to that? So uh, we, that's a really good question also. Um, they don't answer really good when we talk about that. Uh, but as I, as I propose to do is just to add new label. So leave, leave the legacy if you want, because this label will not be used. But if you want to keep it, we can keep it. Uh, but we will have new label, which will be correct and uh, can be used uh, uh, for that. For that. So. Thank you. So thank, thank you very you. much.